What's up guys and welcome to How to Beat E4. In this video, I'm going to show you the very best line to play against the move 1E4 that is the most common move if you are playing at a 1600 level as shown by Lee Chess Statistics. I found the best scoring line for black at the 1600 to 1800 level is to play the Sicilian and specifically to play the Sicilian with E6, the point being that after D4, there's a particular line known as the Four Knight Sicilian and I've noticed that whenever my private students were playing it over the past, that they just kept getting good positions out of the opening. And also as a line that my private students had the most trouble playing against at the same time. So the magic weapon is to go knight f6, and well, after knight c3, knight c6, you can now see why it's called the four knights Sicilian, because all four of the knights are out in the game, make it very easy to remember. The thing is, it's not just a good system at the club level, but actually our current game here that we're looking at is actually a game between Levon Aronian, one of the strongest players never to become world chess champion, in my opinion. Playing against Shakriya Mamadjarov, the top Azerbaijani player, with a very tactical, aggressive style. Aronian just went for the move Knight Take C6, which is a move that you are going to see a fair bit in your games. I do want to also share a few other ideas of how to beat E4, and how to punish some very common mistakes that you are going to see at the club level or in your online games. For example, a move like Bishop E3 is a developing move you see quite a lot. And actually you can meet moves like bishop e3, bishop e2, and various other developing moves in more or less the same way. We play the move bishop to b4, pinning the knight, and you, know, you never know when someone is going to, let's say, forget that the pawn on e4 is threatened with the immediate capture. Obviously that's something that white would rather avoid. But if you try to play the English attack with f3, the problem is that black has a very strong move to take the initiative in the center. Can you see what that move is with black to play? Now, while you're thinking about this, you're certainly very welcome to smash that like button to show your support for how to win against e4. So, the move d5 is the key move here. And with d5, we're hitting that e4 pawn. We're increasing the pressure. Like, notice how easy it is to play black's moves, because the last moves by black have all been focused on attacking that e4 pawn. If white were to take, well, black can then take back with the knight, and we see this fork on the bishop, and the knight is just giving black a very nice initiative here. But I was just kind of a bad position for white. Like, even moves like e5 later in the middle game could just give you a very good central control, for example. So, if the answer is not bishop e3, or bishop e2, or bishop c4, you know, it's all going to be met in the same way. You know, bishop b4, d5, and thanks for the free initiative, mate. Well, what should white do instead? Well, the move knight db5 is a move that I think is quite reasonable. And if you are, let's say, in this 1600 or below level, I would play the move bishop b4, and still play bishop c3 and d5. That's a lazy approach, which admittedly white does get a little bit of a pull with a3, where he does get the bishop pair. But you get good piece play in the center, so it's not exactly the end of the world for black either to get this isolate queen's pawn position. You know your castle, bishop g4, rook e8, d4. Like, the moves are pretty natural, and you get pretty good piece play. Whereas most of the players your level are probably not going to have the skill in order to take full advantage of white's bishop pair advantage, which is the reason why I would very slightly prefer white here. Uh, but there's also another option if you're a more advanced player. You can also play the move d6 and then after bishop f4, e5. But then after bishop g5, this does transpose into the Svezian of Sicilian, which is a better subject for a different video. But just it's good to be aware of that transposition if you are wanting to play the move d6. In any case, knight bd5 is a move you're probably going to see more at a higher level of play, to be honest. The move knight takes c6 is a move that you are going to see a lot. And if you're wondering which way we should take back, I recommend recapturing toward the center. The reason is that you want to support the d5 push in one go, where in fact most the move you're going to see most often if you're playing a below to 1800 level is the move of bishop d3. But then after d5, black has got a very nice central majority. In general, in the Sicilian defense, if you get in a d5 break successfully, you're generally doing very well, kind of like we saw in some of the other examples. And moves like bishop b7 castles, black is very solid, really with nothing to fear whatsoever. But the move e5 played by Roni is definitely the critical move, and it's where the game starts to get very spicy after knight d5. If white were to trade the knights, it kind of helps black to improve his structure. Now, you might have heard the saying, oh, Max, I heard some guy say doubled pawns are bad, and I never want to be seen caught dead with my doubled pawns. But actually, you are going to be able to double those pawns with d6 and d5 later, and then when the dust sells, you'll be the only one with strong pawns in the center. So it's pretty good for black. But the move knight e4 is definitely the move that does show up the one disadvantage of the four knights Sicilian, in my humble opinion. And that is that the d6 square is a little bit of a weakness, where we do have to be a little bit precise here in order to get our counterplay going. Fortunately, we have Mamadjarov to show us the way. 
He played the move queen to c7, showing up that that pawn on e5 is also a little bit weak for white, that it's a strength but also a weakness. White played the move f4, and now probably the best move objectively for black is probably to play the move queen b6, and I know it looks very weird to move the queen twice, you might be wondering why not play queen b8 6 in one move max, but the point is that f4 is a little bit weakening, and we do get that c3, e3 square for the knight, and that does give us a decent amount of counterplay. In such a way, if I'm being honest, I think white has a very small pull, with best play, but I think that it's also quite a comfortable position for black, and its results in practice have certainly been quite respectable. But Mamet Draft came up with this other creative idea, and I still remember when my coach, John Paul Wallace, back in 2004, showed me his idea saying, you know, it's a really tricky move, Tamar a job off a top Aziri player, just was smashing all these GMs with this move, and that move is Rook to B8. So what's the idea of Rook B8? Well, it's kind of actually a very dynamic move, where if white plays the move c4, which I think is the move that Aronian should have played, the idea is to be play a crazy piece sack with bishop b4. White will normally play king to e2, because if you play bishop d2, you're going to run into problems with the knight f4 pin, and we see that white can't take that knight because of the pin by the bishop. So white goes king e2 instead, saying, okay, I'm going to do the king of the hill, like play bong cloud Nakamura style. But black's idea then is to castle and say, all right, I'm going to sack the piece. And okay, now you've got this king looking really stupid on e2. And when you move that knight to some safe square, I'm going to go d6 or even f6. Just rip open that position and hack your king. It's a very tile-like line. It's sort of like if you turn on the engine, it's going to laugh and say this is complete rubbish. But actually, the position is still quite tricky in practice. I think that it's such a way we'll have decent practical results, at least in blitz and rapid, if your opponent does get to this point. So it's true, of course, with how to beat a 4, I guess we should also acknowledge that if White plays correctly, he does have a very good position here. But that's why I mentioned the move Queen b6 as an alternative, that objectively is better if you don't want to sack a piece throughout the opening, and not to be one of the cool kids like that. Well, you're certainly welcome to play the best move, Queen b6. But then again, if you play Queen b6, maybe you're not going to win in 21 moves away Mammoth Draft is black. So let's carry on. Aronian was scared of this Bishop b4 check, so he played the move a3. Which, to be fair, is not such a terrible move either, but it gives Black a chance to correct his mistake. Uh, as I say mistake in inverted commas. And now the move Queen B6. So he saw this idea before, trying to get that knight into E3. And what Aronian did was Aronian tried too hard to control the position. He's saying, I don't want to allow any threats. I just want to have my slight pleasant positional advantage. Just squeeze it for 90 moves and then win in some long end game. But Mamadra was having none of that. After the move queen to f3, well, black played the move bishop to e7, continuing to develop here. Uh, he could have considered pushing the pawn, but I think that developing is quite natural as well. And then after c4, he hit with the move f5. And this is a counter blow that really is worth keeping in mind in these lines. That you don't always have to, allow to move the knight away when the knight is under attack. We already saw one example where black sacked the piece in order to get the big attack on the white king in the center. And it's another example where, you know, if the white knight is moving away, like retreating to say f2, well then we can bring our knight back and their knight also doesn't look so hot in this position. And probably what Aronian should have done is he probably should have played knight d6, because it is I think quite useful to get rid of that dark squared bishop and you know have the bishop pair. After knight f6 I do think that if white plays correctly and finds the move of b4, which is aimed to not letting black just get the pawn, I do think the white is probably better, but it's still a tricky position like queen d4, and 94, and you know, the game is definitely still going on. Like, the point is that, well, basically White is saying that even though he's losing a pawn, that it is true, if we're being honest, that the bishop, the dark bishop will give White more enough compensation. But okay, if your 1800 raid opponents are able to recognize the power of this pawn sack, well, they're probably not going to be 1800 that much longer. So okay, the game saw knight to d2, and that was actually a very big mistake by Aronian. Can you see how Mamet have punished it here with black to play? So while you've paused the video and are thinking about the move that you would play, do remember to show your support and start out with more of my GM videos by hitting that subscribe button. Alright, let's continue with the move that Black played here. He played the move of Knight to E3. I mean, isn't that just a beautiful octopus on E3? Like, just with a thousand eyes just seeing everything, saying, I'm just going to take all your squares from you. Already things have gone very wrong for Aronian, and after Bishop G3... You know, this is why it's fun to watch Mamet Drive's games. He just has this crazy attacking style. We managed to get an initiative, it seems, out of nowhere. With this move of G5, like another power move by Black. The by point of this move is, of course, to undermine the pawn on F4. But there's also the point that if White does take that pawn, 
Well, we can even play with like Queen D4. Again, keep in mind, we're not always forced to play a recapture in chess. And actually, to move Bishop G5 would have been a big blunder here. Because then you would run into a little drum roll for emphasis. The Queen H5 fork, forking the King and the Bishop. And well, that's just pretty sad to run into this. Fortunately, Queen D4 shows that actually the E5 pawn is the fish we're frying here. And we're also hitting the Bishop. So basically, once we get that pawn, it's just good news for Black. And well, Black is just very happy to have this monster center after something like, let's say... I, mean, I don't even know what move White should play, but if he does play like Bishop B1, then yeah, he can take. And you know, this is just like an absolute dream come true for Black. This is the opposition that Tal would sack two pieces for, and we didn't even sack any material to get here. Oh, well, they're only going to try to keep the structure solid with G3, but after G takes F4, G takes F4, and now to move Rook G8, take your open file. The Viking is now caught in the crossfire. You know, this isn't Alexander the Great going over the rolls first here. This is instead... Well, you think of a good historical example for me. Uh, so after knight to f1, black played knight to g2 here. And, well, I mean, you can kind of see we don't really want to trade the pieces just yet when we can keep on attacking with tempo. Aronian tried to move king to e2, going for the bond cloud after all, I guess, after his initial reluctance. But okay, after queen d4, this is not a good bond cloud. Because, you know, you're just threatening to crash through on b2. And, well, the game concluded as follows. White played knight g3, probably realizing that, okay, even... Something like a bishop a6 c4 can even win the material in the worst case. So he's trying to corral that knight on g2 and put it back in its pen. But black instead played a winning move, rook b2. There are a lot of winning moves, but why not win in style? So it takes, takes, king f1. And now after the move knight to h4, Aronian resigned here. And the reason he resigned is because, well, the rook is under attack. The queen is under attack as well. And if you play a queen h5 check, it only is a temporary measure. Still, this rook is under fire, and if white does try to defend the rook, let's say, with rook to d1, for example, black's just going to play queen to g2, and it just all falls apart. Like, after king g1, even knight to f3, it's going to win the queen in this case. But say if white put the rook on a different square, like, let's say, for example, he plays rook to b1 instead. Actually, it turns out knight f3 is still working here as well, actually, because if king d1, you're going to have a nice queen and knight mate with queen d2. You know, now we see white a queen and the knight... Are the ultimate tag team for attacking in chess. But of course, queen takes f3, queen f3 is also gg with being a queen up. So there you are. That's how Mamadra smashed Aronian in 21 moves. And well, if it's possible to beat such a strong grandmaster with his repertoire with the black pieces in a uh, rapid game. Well, it definitely shows what's possible for you guys as well. Playing this against some 1600 players or whatever opponents you are playing in online chess or tournaments. So yeah, good luck with playing the Four Knights of Cillian. Just to give you a little reminder... It's when we're playing e4, c5. And then after e6, just putting the four knights, like knight c6, knight f6. And then playing for bishop b4, d5 is kind of the general way in which we're developing our pieces if they play passively. So d4 takes and And well, you kind of know the rest from there. So anyway, do make sure to show your support. You know, comment below with your thoughts, your ideas, any fun little stories as well. Always good to see them. You know, as always, you know, make sure to like and subscribe to keep up with these GM videos. And I will see you guys in the next video on how to beat that next chess opening.